It has been more than a hundred years since Kazimir Malevich has created his most notable work, Black Square, 1915. Yet disputes around it are still raging. Some say that this artwork is the highest point in the development of European art and the triumph of suprematism. Others claim Black Square to be a revolution icon and a denial of religion, as well as the old regime, and the third ones argue that it's just a joke that obviously went too far. What's the meaning of Kazimir Malevich as a black square then? How did a square become a symbol of new art, and why do critics still argue over it? Today we'll answer these questions. If you find history or art as fascinating as we do, and you'd like to see more videos on art, let us know in the comments, press the like button, and subscribe to this channel. Your support is important for us. The age of Russian avant-garde was a true triumph for Russian art. In the past, Russian painters looked up to Italians and French artists, but the tables turned at the dawn of the 20th century when the whole world saw what Russian artists were capable of. Back then, painters struggled to find a new artistic language. The early 20th century saw Europe in crisis looking for a new religion, a new ideological foundation that would replace Christianity. Instead of the obsolete canons, mysticism and concepts of irrational became popular. The avant-garde searchings were based on the idea of synthesis, blending of music, philosophy, religion and the visual arts into a single system. As a result, art was declared a new religion, which means that artists took on the role of preachers and messiahs. A painter became the legislator of the new world, establishing the rules of life and writing manifestos. In those days, you could feel the ideas of a non-objective art in the air. Piet Mondrian, Franciszek Kupka, Vladimir Tatlin, Lubov Popova, Vasily Kandinsky and Kazimir Malevich. They were all trying to capture the feel of the new epoch in their own way. The last question was, who would make the boldest step? And you know the answer. Just like any other avant-garde painter, Malevich didn't receive academic art education. He was trained at the Kiev School of Art and failed the entrance exam at the Moscow Academy of Fine Arts several times. Before creating his main masterpiece, Malevich experimented with the leading artistic movements that flourished during that period. This is why his artistic path can be divided into the following stages. Realism, his earliest works were lost. Impressionism, Cuba Futurism. And the pinnacle of his artistic way is suprematism and black square. How did Malevich reach this very point, though? Having settled in Moscow in 1907, Malevich entered the circle of young and aspiring avant-garde artists Mikhail Orionov and Natalia Goncharova. In their works, they address all the Russian icons and Lubak prints, looking for a way to use the motifs of the dark past in the brave new world of the 20th century. In the art of Kazimir Malevich, the appeal to folk culture played a decisive role. Born to a Polish family in Ukraine, the artist took inspiration and borrowed symbols from a traditional Ukrainian embroidered shirt. Folk embroidery is filled with deep sacred meaning in each and every line of its patterns. A rhombus stands for fertility, and a triangle is a symbol of the trinity, spirit, and family. The most ambiguous element is a square that can symbolize Earth itself, the four cardinal points, the four times of day, four seasons of the year, and four seasons in life, childhood, youth, maturity, and old age. Not only did avant-garde artists draw inspiration from folk culture, they also partnered with craft traders. The Ukrainian art tale Verbovka, founded by Natalia Davidova and famous for its embroidery, became one of the artistic centers for Malevich. Craft traders found and recreated old ornaments and came up with new ones too, enhancing them with modern patterns and motifs. Some researchers believe that Artel Verbovka was the birthplace of suprematism, but it was and remains only a theory. As Malevich himself put it, the idea of suprematism first came to him when the artist was working on Victory Over the Sun, a 1913 futuristic opera. It was created in a collab with Alexei Krushenik and Mikhail Matushin, the first one was responsible for creating an abstruse libretto in Zam language, and the other one for experimental music, while Malevich worked on futuristic stage background and costumes for this unprecedented avant-garde performance. The plot revolves around the victory of the new people, Baudelaire, over the old way of things. 
This process is represented by the sun replaced by electricity or, in a wider sense, nature replaced by the artificial. Now let's imagine for a minute how the play looked. A piano is playing out of tune and there are only two professional actors in the crowd of people on the stage. They're all dressed in Malevich's futuristic costumes and an offstage voice is reciting. To smash the turtle's skull, to fall on the cradle of the bloodthirsty turnip, welcome the cage. The greasy bad bug reeks of the grave, little black leg, the flattened grave rocks, the lace of shavings undulate. Naturally, many ununiformed viewers left the play in the middle of the action, not ready to perceive a piece of art so flamboyant. However, as the opera was meant to be a bold and epic scandal, the artists decided their work to be a great success. Among the decorations, we can spot the prototype of black square with the painter's remark saying glupa, or stupid. A black square on a white background symbolizes the solar eclipse and the world's entering a new era and new aesthetics. Later, Malevich called this new aesthetics suprematism. Suprematism as the new, the last, and the highest art movement was officially presented in 1915. Malevich offered his works to the public eye at the last futurist exhibition of paintings, 010, held by Ivan Puni. The premiere might have taken place much later if the organizer of the exhibition had not happened to enter the workshop where Malevich was painting and spotted his works. There was no time to wait afterward. Malevich couldn't afford other painters stealing his ideas. An hour before the opening of the 010, the artist hastily wrote the explanations for his works and proclaimed suprematism to be now and new art movement. As for the famous black square, there were several variations for its name. Quadrangle, black suprematist square, and finally black square. This is what Malevich said about his creation. Until now, creative will has been squeezed into real life forms. The ugliness was brought by the stronger to an almost vanishing moment, but didn't go beyond zero. But I changed to zero form and went beyond zero one. What did the artist mean by that? Zero was the artist's favorite number. In creating Black Square, Malevich brought the entire process of European art development to the point of its logical conclusion. And the same point became the starting one for new art. Having brought Black Square to life, Malevich set about creating other suprematist compositions using the simplest geometric shapes. The positioning of the painting is significant too. Black Square hangs in the so-called icon corner or red corner, a small worship space in Russian houses that traditionally was occupied by icons. This aspect gave the painting an additional meaning, rejecting the old religion and establishing a new one. Due to this bold gesture, Malevich was now associated with the ideas of revolution and communism. The artist also published a brochure under the title From Cubism and Futurism to Suprematism. In this work, he outlined the key aspects of his theory of suprematism. The movement itself didn't last for long, emerging in 1913 and ending in 1918. However, it went through several stages in its development. Malevich divided the progression of suprematism into three stages, black, colored, and white. By painting white on white, Malevich reached the critical point where form and color meet. There was nothing more to be done in artistic suprematism, and the movement had died out. But artist theory and painting always were inseparable, and Malevich spent the next several weeks writing theoretical grounding that supported his paintings. For Malevich, a manifesto served the same purpose as a painting. Through text, he tried to comprehend the meaning of the art revolution that he brought with suprematism. I couldn't sleep or eat. I wanted to understand what I had done. The next step made by Kazimir Malevich was to embark on a journey as a messiah. He spread the ideas of suprematism and stopped in Vitebsk, founding the Unovis School of Contemporary Art. In Russian, Unovis is an abbreviation standing for the champions of the new art. Marc Chagall happened to be working there at the same time and was not surprised that the two geniuses could coexist in neighboring workshops. Despite the gaps in his education, Malevich was an outstanding leader and orator. These were skills that brought him about 100 students willing to continue his work. Chagall could not stand the competition and left for Paris, while Malevich was busy making history as the modern art founder.
There would be no wonders of contemporary art if it was not for the masterpieces of the Renaissance and dynamic works of the Barocco. What is the connection between suprematism, Titian, and ancient painting? Learn the answer to this and other questions in our course Art History, from cave paintings to Banksy. Become well-versed in world art history in 28 hours with us. See the promo code for a discount and the link to the course in the video description. Black Square celebrated its 100th anniversary in 2015. The painting was x-rayed and its layers were observed under the microscope. Have you ever noticed that the surface of the painting is coated with crack layers? They didn't appear just because of the painting's aging. In their research, Moscow's Tretikov Gallery found two more layers under the well-known black paint. The lower one is a cube of futuristic composition and above it there is a proto-suprematist one. And Black Square tops them all. Notice that black square is not exactly a square, as there are no parallel sides, and it's not exactly black either. Its color was a combination of many shades laid on a canvas on one another. It was a common practice for painters to use the same canvas for two and even more paintings. Picasso, for instance, created his The Life by repainting his The Dernier's Moments. Amadeo Modigliani was known for using the same life hack, Sometimes he even created his paintings on both sides of the same canvas, and this is why we have Portrait of Maud Abrantes, 1907, with the nude with hat on the reverse side. However, the most astounding finding was an inscription on the painting that reads Negroes battling in a cave. It's most likely a reference to an 1897 work by French humorist Alphonse Allais called Negroes fighting in a cellar at night, or his similar 1893 creation called Negroes fight in a tunnel. That is, the racist joke made by Malevich wasn't original, as wasn't his usage of color and the choice of the geometrical figure. Still, the painting is more than just a piece of black on a canvas. Behind it, there's a new vision and a new philosophy of the role of art in a new world. Malevich doubts, searches for the elusive truth, and reshapes reality to suit him. In his artworks, there is no direct answer to the question of what the world will look like in the future, but provides us with a symbol of a new era, the one that art critics still discuss. Let us know in the comments if you enjoy our content and would like to see more videos on remarkable artists. Don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to our channel not to miss anything. To learn how avant-garde artists influenced the development of 20th century art, check out our video course Art History from Cave Paintings to Banksy. In 28 hours, you'll learn all about world art history and use promo code MALEVICH to get a 10% discount for the course. See the link to the course in the video description.